As I emerged from my domestic violence situation, a lot of things happened in my life. There was significant change, moving homes, transitioning to becoming a single parent and not seeing my child every day. I lost my job and my career fell over, which caused financial problems. My confidence hit the floor. I had nothing left in the tank. And I look back to that woman and uh, I just want to give her a hug because I know how hard life was back then. We have to keep our women and children safe. Please, let's change the world, hey? Thank you. The number one killer of women up to the age of 44 is being murdered at the hands of the man who once said, I love you. Uh, hi, this is Raksha calling from Brisbane Domestic Violence Service. We've received your referral from Queensland Police regarding your domestic violence matters. We are the Brisbane Domestic Violence Service, so we're the regional um, specialist service here in Brisbane. We have the privilege of having quite a lot of different services. So we work predominantly with women and children, so those who are needing support, uh, whether that be because they're in a relationship and they're trying to explore um, if those, that relationship's healthy and equal, um, or sometimes at the really pointy end of their experiences and, and incidents happened and they need support. They might be planning to be able to leave that relationship and they know that it could be a really uh, dangerous or scary time for them and they know that they need support. I also know how fortunate I was to have been put in touch with MICA Projects and Brisbane Domestic Violence Service and they really did help me turn my life around. They helped me see that there was a future. They encouraged me every step along the way and made me realise that I wasn't broken and that everything would be okay. And it was. I booked her for an, uh, uh, safety planning. However, I've done a, a brief safety planning on, over the phone. Like she's aware to call triple zero if anything happens because she has said that he's driving by uh, her house and he has located the, where they were living. Being really responsive, being really trauma informed, um, having that attitude of, um, you know, trying to go that extra mile wherever possible and having a look at what the needs of individuals are rather than expecting them to fit in with us, we fit in with what they need. We've got a police officer that's housed here, we have our own staff in police stations, we've got a financial counsellor here, we've got people that work specifically with children and young people. Yeah. Absolutely, I'll, I'll keep my eyes on any um, mm. you know attachment concerns that I might see. Yeah, any other trauma-based behaviours that might come up in mm. the play that we do together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I really didn't know what to expect. I still hadn't really come to terms with that phrase, domestic and family violence. I'd never seen a support worker for anything, so I was really nervous when I went to see them. But I had this beautiful woman that was there to walk with me helped me unpack what had happened and find a name for what had occurred. And I was able to acknowledge that I had been living with domestic violence and she really helped me take those steps towards recovering and rebuilding and moving forwards with my life. We want our service to be a place where everyone can feel supported and heard and listened to and be provided with um, team members that understand their experience. So everybody's experience can be different. So people, their experience of violence, it can be as diverse as the population. So we know that the rate of women and children, young girls who experience violence in their lifetime is significant. So we know that the diversity of the services that we need to offer needs to represent the diversity of the community. The experience of domestic and family violence um, doesn't discriminate. Uh, anyone um, can experience violence. So we provide frozen meals that the cafe next door, Hope Cafe, cooks um, and packs for us and freezes. Um, so the person using violence or the perpetrator will sometimes have access to login details, bank account details, they can sometimes um, put malware on phones so they can access their phone from a different location and be able to track and trace the individual. So it's um, quite concerning, it's tech abuse and so we do assist with the phone in order to empower people to have technology that's safe. We can receive up to 20,000 phone calls a year. Um, that does change and fluctuate over the year um, and we're always revising our services to make sure that we can respond to as many phone calls as possible that come through. 
Um, there are times when the demand is too high and we don't get to answer the phone. So what we do encourage and what we do support and we try and respond to as best as we can is when other services or professionals or community members support someone to contact us. So a lot of the work that we do is actually responding to referrals that have come from police or other community organisation or government partners. So when somebody has accessed their services and they're recognising that they might be experiencing domestic violence, being able to connect us in so that we can assist those people. A lot of our work comes from those pathways and we're really grateful for the community that we're in Brisbane and the, the level of knowledge and recognition that happens at a community level. Through working with MICA, not only have I navigated through and beyond domestic and family violence, I've had the privilege of working with other women that have done the same, but I've also created an organisation that works with workplaces to address domestic and family violence in a meaningful and relevant way.